Greetings, adventure. Welcome to the D20 Academy podcast. I'm Shiloh. And I'm Gabriel. And this week, episode 76, we're going to take some writing prompts, try and combine them, and come up with the plot for an entire movie. Hey, you guys. So today's a crazy one. Um... We're taking writing prompts and transforming it into a movie idea, and it kind of goes through some wild twists and turns. Very entertaining, very wacky. I um, just wanted to let you know um, that if you guys are enjoying this podcast, please rate us if you're listening to it on Amazon or Apple, or if you're able to rate this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. It would mean a lot. It would mean we could reach more people um, and also, you know, show other people our really cool, great, amazing movie ideas that we come up with. <laughs> Yeah, and even if you have complaints or whatever, still, leave a review. Let us know what your complaints are. Let us know anything that you want to say. Maybe say a joke, make us laugh. I don't know. Just put down a review, please. Yeah, that would be awesome. Even if it's a horrible review if you hated yeah. this episode. <laughs> Alright guys, enjoy the episode. Okay, so welcome, and as of right now... We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Just in general, in life, and, and in this moment. <laughs> and in this moment. So I buckle was... up and get ready for a ride or, or something. So, whatever we said in the opening and the intro of this episode, we'll tell you what's going on. But as of right, we're going to record that after we figure out what's going on. <laughs> Okay, so if you haven't noticed, we've been kind of taking a little bit of a different turn with our episodes, straying away from more of just like discussion slash teaching kind of based things that are typically focused primarily on tabletop role playing to more of an open, just kind of storytelling view and also more like creative project based things where we're more like creating games and stories. Um, class rebuilds are obviously a part of that where we're like kind of rebuilding classes and stuff like that. Um, and we've been having a lot of fun doing them. Uh, let us know what you think. If you uh, would like some more episodes of those kind of teaching, discussion-based things um, about tabletop role-playing games. But we've been having a lot of fun with these. Uh, we also plan to do some more other things in the future. Whatever sticks, basically. Um, you know, if eventually we want to build a role-playing game and log it on this episode or a movie, a script, or whatever it is... Um, and so we're just doing another one of those things. <laughs> another one of those things. <laughs> so what exactly is going on right now, Gabe? Right now we are looking for prompts. If you look up writing prompts into Google, you will find 127 million results. Approximately. <laughs> Approximately, yeah. So in this episode, we're going to look through every single one of those results try and find an interesting one and create a a setting a story a character a something yeah i i think i think we're gonna have to figure out um as we go along like what this fits into like if if this is like a movie or like if this is a game or like just like a world or whatever it is i think it's eventually just gonna have to come from like so we don't even know like what the end result is yet um but yeah probably some story and world that we're gonna kind of build in like an hour, <laughs> you know, from some sort of prompt. Um, so right now we're looking through prompts, <laughs> and we want to get through this as fast as possible. We want some to, to find something as soon as possible so we can start working on it. Um, so I found one that I like. Uh, after centuries of perfecting magic potions. The oldest son decides to launch the family business of magic into the corporate world. This is from fantasy writing prompts at thinkwritten.com. Nice. The one and, that, uh, that, that I like sounds... the most so far is write a near future thriller where a piece of everyday technology is turned against your character and only your character. Okay, that's pretty good. And I think mine's pretty good too. And because. I don't like uh, most of these prompts that I'm reading. <laughs> yeah, most of the prompts are really bad. Are pretty awful. <laughs> Which makes sense, because there's like a million of them. Mm -hmm. So obviously they can't all be bangers. Um, 
So, uh, I think we take these two and we combine them. Since these are the two that have stood out to us, and I don't want to take too much time looking through these yeah. prompts. Okay, so it's a, sorry, dark thriller future, that what you said? Near future thriller. Near future thriller, where a piece of everyday technology turns against our protagonist, right? But only them. Yes, but only them. Okay, and then on my hand, we have, um, seems like just normal Earth, but this one family has been perfecting magic potions, and they have magic. And then this one kid inherits everything, and he decides to open up about the magic existing, and tries to turn it into a business in the corporate world. And this... I feel like we can combine these things. Some kind of, uh, you know... A little bit of a futuristic kind of Magitech kind of deal. You know what I mean? Okay. Sure. I'm thinking... It, 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 but mine says corporate and like I'm like near future thriller is very like cyber... It sounds very cyberpunk to me. And so I feel like this is kind of, uh, you know... This gives me kind of... These two prompts kind of give me like cyberpunky vibes. Kind of future, very corporate business run kind of deal you know mm -hmm. and then the sudden introduction of magic shake thing shakes things up dramatically yeah and then also some as some piece of everyday technology has to do something <laughs> you know <laughs> just thinking of like his iphone attacking him uh <laughs> I, I, his front door is just just taunting him just just always just roasting him you know what i mean yeah that's <laughs> how could okay your prompt is strange to me because it's like a thriller which is like usually intense and stuff but the everyday object turning against your it just sounds very dorky to me <laughs> so i feel all like right, right. what i was thinking was something like dorky okay electronic communication like doesn't work around him or something oh you know yeah 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 or her or her. Him or her. Okay, so this protagonist, it turns against him in the sense that it just doesn't work for them. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely an interesting take that's not dorky. <laughs> like, well, I was just thinking, like, than your I was just thinking, like, yelling Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, at the, the end of Beauty and the Beast where all the, the uh, furniture is attacking the, um, the townspeople. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it immediately popped into my head. Okay, cool. And it has to be a thriller, right? Yeah. So maybe so, we have so to thriller. Incorporate that song in some way. <laughs> Michael Jackson's thriller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to incorporate that. So you know, thriller to me, you know, some kind of like born identity kind of deal, maybe. You know, technology starts uh, stops working for this protagonist, and then something. They're on the run or something, or they're trying to find something. <laughs> Something, right? Something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or, or, uh, okay. Right, right. What about yeah, this? Yeah, what yeah. about this instead? What about this is a little bit more distant future. But what sure, if fine. like the norm is to be like a cyborg, you know? You get okay. implants normal that's like normalized. To the point yeah. where people store memories electronically as well as you know, just biologically in their brain. I see. Okay. But, and like that's, and it's gotten to a point where people rely on that as okay. I mean, sort of like memory or something. Oh, so this memory. protagonist loses their memory. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the MacGuffin, some, I like this. Yeah. So, so the MacGuffin is the memory. Yeah. Wait, that's awesome. Actually. <laughs> The MacGuffin is this some kind of physical, like a hard drive. <laughs> the MacGuffin is actually a physical re manifestation of like what, like the protagonist's memory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the twist, right, is that like they remove the memory, right? Because they actually didn't want to be with it. Because they did something so bad in their past. Yeah. That they, that they were actually the one, you know, that's the, that's the twist or something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That like they actually didn't want their memory. And then like the theme of the movie is like, Really, 
what like is ignorance bliss or is you know knowledge power we live in you know a what society I mean? yeah we live in a society is really the thing <laughs> okay where do potions <laughs> where do potions come into this <laughs> okay <laughs> How to co- I, I want to combine these two. Promise. Okay, okay. I want to do that. So, so where do potions come into this? I, I feel like th- that works really well with kind of the augmentation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of deal. Because potions kind of, you know, augment people, right? Makes them stronger or makes them invisible or whatever. And then, or, you know, whatever potions do in this world. Um, hmm. Wait, give me a second here. Give me a second here. Yep. Yeah, I actually have something. Okay. Okay. Shoot. I, we're gonna we're kind of bending these prompts a bit, such as distant future and stuff like that. I want to bend this a bit. Don't know if they're exactly magical, okay, per se. But what if potions are like drugs? Okay. And they do something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but maybe a, a particular drug is introduced that does something. That is some kind of corporate ploy to do something. I I don't I don't know. You kind of slipping away the from dark me. Here. It's slipping away from me. It was there and now it's gone. What were you gonna say? No, uh, I I didn't have time to develop it because I was listening to you. Um. What if it's. Okay. Okay. So, blah, 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 something happens, guy without his memory, he, like, wakes up with no memory in a place surrounded by, like, magical supplies, okay? Okay. And potions. Okay. That he has no memory of, he doesn't know who he is, how he got there, what these things are. And okay. he, like, reintroduces himself, like, to the rest of the world and through experimentation and, you know, this and that, and exploring the place that he woke up in. He finds out more about these potions and how they work and, well, if it's magic or whatever, or if it's just, like, these, you know, elixirs, what have you. And has, I don't know, I don't know why exactly, what his goal is. Okay. But he, like, alerts the rest of the world to these potions or whatever, Mm -hmm. to the existence of magic. And the twist is that he, the whole reason he doesn't have his memory was that it was like a failed attempt to hide those secrets or what have you. Okay, wait, I got it. I got it. Working off what you're saying, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. The villain is this, this potion character, okay? The potion so, character. The potion, okay, so these secrets have been hidden, right? Should the world learn of magic and the power that these potions contain... Like, World War Three would start, okay, essentially, right? Like, and so there is this family that has been protecting these secrets. You know, um, they even, you know, uh, are wary of using even this power for good or whatever, right? So they've been protecting these secrets for, for, for centuries. Um, you know, it is just like magic, or it could be like some kind of supernatural drug or something, but whatever it is, should this fall into the wrong hands, it could be really bad, right? And so this family has been protecting these uh this um these potions and the villain is someone who's trying to get these potions out there into the world so maybe they are the heir of this family trying to you know turn it into like a corporate business Mm -hmm. because they're greedy or whatever it is and so they're the villain and the protagonist is trying to stop them and they need their memory the memory is the key piece of, like, how to stop this person, or, like, the truth of something, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? That's it. That's all I got. (laughs) 
Okay. But okay. you know what? I kind of yeah, like that. I... Okay. I working off of that. Where the villain is trying to distribute these secrets, whatever these potions, and the protagonist is trying to stop that. Yeah. What if the protagonist is like the actual heir to like that family? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then his younger brother oh, or something. Oh, took his memory. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. So that he could. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like that. It's just like, how do we get to the place? <sighs> how, how do we get to the place where that comes to light like yeah. like what's the quest right is the question there because if the person if the protagonist recovers their memory early then they're like oh that's when he, i need to go stop my little bro or little sis mm -hmm. or whatever right but then like if it's the uh, you know what i mean yeah like maybe it kind of sounds like a, a midpoint turn kind of okay 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 so the reason the younger sibling didn't just, like, assassinate the older sibling or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. It's because these secrets, the truth of the, this magic is locked in the family's vault or something, right? It's, it's super secure, very difficult to get into, um, and so, like, only the... Something like this. Like, only the error's, like, fingerprint would work, essentially, or whatever, right? So... This protagonist wakes up with no memory, and then this young this young person is like, "Hey, I need your help. Can you help me?" And they make a lie, and like they're the companion along the quest to get to this vault to do this thing. But turns out that, that was the younger sibling who just needed the help. You know, I mean, who just needed the older sibling with them to like unlock the place. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or <sighs> I guess it might worse. Uh, yeah. The, the rough part about the memory thing is that, like, the protagonist needs the memory to stop, to even understand the situation, to stop the villain. Yeah. Which means that, like, they should just have the memory at, since the beginning, you know what I mean? So there's something, there's something wrong. There's something we're missing, I should say. I like the concept that the the quest is for the memory. Like, and the protagonist doesn't get it till near the end. Mm -hmm. The the memory hard drive. <laughs> oh, what was your prompt again? <laughs> uh -huh. Are we doing that? Are we doing? That? I don't know. <laughs> Not in this everyday... version of whatever. See, this is. We kind of just go off into yeah <laughs> the void. <laughs> we always do this. We just like go way off. But I, okay, I, I like to see if, if we can stick to this. We need we need to fit stick within to these which parts. part of it. <laughs> I think I think we could bend them a bit, but you know. I think we still have to keep to, like, uh, an everyday object turning against this person. <sighs> I just, I don't know if it fits with yeah, the rest of what we've does. cooked up. With what we've, what we've, what we've brewed. You get it? Because potions. <laughs> <Huh. clears throat> oh. Anyway. Okay, so character, physical, people actually upload their memory into, like, hard drives and stuff. And, like, that's how people keep and store memory. Yeah. But this person had their memory stolen from them. Or something. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and they have to find their memory. They have to figure out what's going on. And then, like, a people are, you know, a group is, like, hunting 
the protagonist and then like what is going on who are these people why you know something like that mm-hmm. um Yeah. <laughs> okay. What if Okay. The protagonist like sealed away his memory in an attempt to stop things. Or something. And suppose that he is uh, Oh more of like the Sorry. Okay. More of And, like, the person who, his brother, what have you, relative, who's trying to take his position, realizes what happened, and is using the now amnesiac brother to find it. Because, like, I don't know, the brother's really good at finding things or killing people or whatever. Something. Okay, okay, okay. Here's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Other direction. Our character is kind of the villain. They are the only one left who knows about the secrets of the potions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're the, they're the heir. And it's dangerous knowledge. To know this this magic and and like because once again if you know if this magic falls into the wrong hands then it's bad. And so maybe they like two ways either like someone then stole their memory, and then is like hacking into their memory to like try to find where's the location of this vault or whatever like you know what are this what are these secrets, or the person sealed away their own memory because it was too powerful for them to know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just back to the my idea that we first had. Like, the guy wakes right. up around the stuff, but he doesn't remember who he is or whatever because he sealed his own memory away to protect the secrets. But something went wrong. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I feel like maybe there should be a, a villain. Someone needs to be, like, maybe, like, actively trying to do something. Because I don't know what you do with, like, the protagonist locked away their own memory. Okay. <laughs> cool. You know what I mean? Someone needs to be, like... Because if they forgot their memory, that means that they have no direction. They have no wants or goals or anything at the beginning. Which means that some something or someone needs to be forcing them to do something. Whether someone's hunting them or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, like, they have no goal or anything just because they have no memory. Yeah. So, yeah, so something needs to happen and, like, and like force this character to go somewhere. Or Have you ever seen the Bourne movies? Yeah. What, what, it, what is that? What, what does he do? He tries to figure out what's going on. It's been a while, but, like... He's being like hunted down by the operation that kind of made him. So he, so he's like being hunted at the beginning. So he's just trying to run away. And in the process of running away, then he begins to learn stuff. I think so. And that gives him a direction. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think that's a good that's a good way to do it. Is that his life is threatened? Something's happening. So. He has to escape, whatever, I don't know, cool opening action scene um, of, you know, him escaping, whatever, or like, you know, a chase or a fight. And then in the process of him trying to run and hide and like, what is going on, he runs across the other characters and or something that like gives, begins to give him context and then begins to give him a direction. Right? Sure. I just don't think there's anything particularly interesting. Sure, it. sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it's just it's just cyberpunk. <laughs> cyberpunk yeah. born it's legacy or whatever. With no real integration but with it... any of the prompts that we've come across. 
<laughs> or any of the ideas we had going into this. <laughs> oh, that's so true. <laughs> We've no, written out of... what we started with. But... <laughs> But you see, Jason Bourne is a natural-born killer and assassin, but this character is a natural-born veterinarian, actually. Oh. And is really good at taking care of cute dogs. So. Cool. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's incorporate these two dang prompts, uh, because we're not even at there anymore. So we have Potion corporate family thing and we have uh what's the other one everyday object turning against our protagonist yeah it's so hard the potions are turning against it. <laughs> the potions are turning against the protagonist <laughs> yes exactly 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 Okay. Okay, hear me out. Way different direction. Okay. Okay. What if we go... I don't know what this genre is called, but, like, our world, but secretly, magic is happening. Uh-huh. You know? I guess Harry Potter would fit into this. I'm thinking more like Artemis Fowl um, and Dresden Files. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. And so our protagonist is a wizard, Harry, uh, is some kind of mage. And so the everyday objects like are just like not working with them, right? Like in the sense that like, you know, the way that they're interacting with their environment is wonky because they're actually magical, right? And they're accidentally doing magic or whatever, okay? Boom, check your prompt. So, so Harry Potter. And so <laughs> then, it has something to do with magic potions being introduced into the corporate world, and it's it's like a, a merger of the secret magic underground world and then also regular life. And so the later books this in the Harry Potter series. Sorry. So the later books in the Harry Potter series. Uh, yeah, but this character is introduced to this secret underground magic world, and they're like, "What? I didn't know this existed." Like Artemis Fowl. And then they are sent on a, a hunt. Uh, it's a mystery on who the potions are leading us to. And that's like Dresden Files. So actually, it's copying multiple properties at once. <laughs> We're really running We're into a this. wall. We're Everywhere. Killing this. We're killing this. The th <laughs> killing this. It's just to me, the, 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 it's just, it speaks a little bit more to like kind of a... A little bit more of a, uh, these prompts are kind of, not yours exactly, but mine feels a bit more like that kind of, you know, spunky kind of quirky little magic in the real world kind of deal. Okay, we can work with that. What's, what's something that magic in the real world hasn't done yet from what you've, from media that you've consumed? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, well, let's say this. What is kind of like a genre that hasn't been done yet, I feel like, is better. You know what I mean? I mean, assumedly every genre has been done. Kai, yeah, but, yeah. So I, th I think genres, like, regardless of genre, like, a lot of ideas have been explored before. And sure, we can't sure, say, sure, like, sure, oh, sure. just because I haven't read a, a horror, like, version of this doesn't mean that it doesn't exist and that just leaves so many doors wide open it doesn't narrow down our options at all but if we can come up with ideas of how we think the real world and magic would interact that we haven't seen before then that gives, it, gives us something perhaps a little bit more unique right well what if it were what if it was back to kind of like the drug thing magical drugs okay so I don't know, what I was trying to use about this is kind of like in Harry Potter. Like, you know, if Harry Potter was, like, real, right? Like, the yeah. Wizarding World was real. And, like, there's all these spells and magical things that are in, in, in secret. Which, first of all, like, that's like, a, it just doesn't make sense how they can have kept all that secret. But anyway, <laughs> at least Rick Riordan is, like, the 
the fog or whatever. Yeah, the heck you whatever it is, it like stops mortals from seeing. The stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they mentions once, and you're just like, okay, I'll just take this. I'll just suspension of disbelief. Um, me, I think it was you just talking about the like humans like suck. Like we're super greedy and like driven by all these things, and like. If the Wizarding World was real, like, there would be all these spells and magical things for, like, jacked up stuff. You know, like, breaking into, like, banks. And, like, and like drugs and stuff, right? And, yeah. like, talking to dead people. And, like, manipulating people, mind-controlling people to exploit them. Like, really bad stuff, okay? So, what if we go, like, Harry Potter, but H... But... HBO. <laughs> what if it's like HBO Harry Potter, where it's dark and where it's dark and gritty? It's like Game of Thrones Harry Potter. Okay, never mind. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is like, you know, what if we kind of approach it like really like, if humans had magic, like, mm -hmm. it would not be fun and fantastical. <laughs> You know what I mean? A lot of stuff would be jacked up, right? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you haven't watched it. Have you, there's a show, I think it's based off of the book series, The Magicians. Never heard on of Netflix. it. Netflix? I don't know if it's a Netflix original. I don't think it is, actually. The Magicians. Oh, it's sci-fi, it looks like. It's, 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 it's magic. It's like a mixture of fantasy and real life for this... No, 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 sci-fi, the, the channel. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's not, it's not sci-fi. It's just, it's, you know, it's... No. Okay, here's the Wikipedia overview. Quentin Coldwater... Oh, yeah, and he kind of sucks. Grad, a grad student at Breakbills College for ma Magical... Don't know how to pronounce that. Has been fascinated by the magical fantasy world since he was young. But as he's gotten older, him and his 20-something friends have discovered that the magical world they read about as children is not only real, but it poses dangers to humanity. While studying at the secret upstate New York school, the friends struggle to cope with the aftermath of a catastrophe that befalls the institution. And it's based off a book series. And it's quite dark and, like... Oh, because it's... Because it's... Because everything's gritty now. Everything's cerebral and gritty and dark <laughs> and slow burn. Nowadays. Okay. So that's kind of the same deal. Yeah. But I don't want to do a school. Schools of Magic is overdone. I'm sorry. Like. Yeah, I agree. But but you're talking about but you're talking about it's it's kind of like the. It's dark, gritty magic. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I like the idea that the main characters, or at least just the main character, is not magical. You know, that might as well be the case in The Magicians because the main character just sucks so much. <laughs> Have you seen the show? I've seen, like, the first, like, two seasons or something. Oh, wow. i never heard you talk about it before. So... But he just, he just, he's just a bad character, you mean? He just, like, sucks at everything he does, and he's really annoying. That's annoying. Yeah. Okay, but, um, do you know what I mean? Kind of more like, uh, you know, someone who I think is introduced to the world. Because mm -hmm. one thing you have to do, I feel like, is, like, what it, the reason Harry Potter and stuff is all, like, cool is because, and, like, Percy Jackson, right, is, like, the character can, the, the audience, excuse me, can kind of vicariously live through the protagonist and get introduced to the world as they are introduced to the world, right? Yeah. And so I think getting someone, but even in that case, right? Like Harry Potter is actually a wizard. Mm -hmm. But what if we followed a Muggle into the Wizarding World, and they are the ones who have to stop the threat or whatever? All right. Because Maybe. magicians are the ones that are getting idea. corrupted. What if? Let's hear it. Like you're saying, but the complete opposite. We do queer eye, but magical. <laughs> what? Magical Wait. Que queer eye. So, wizards and witches help fix a guy's life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just imagine, like... There's actually be, like, a really funny show. Mm -hmm. It, like, it's shot kind of like a mockumentary, and so, but it's, like... 
or something, right? Mm-hmm. It's shot just like Queer Eye, like a reality TV show, but like they're wizards and like they're magically helping fix the person's life. That would actually be like a pretty entertaining show, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, that doesn't have to do with our prompts. We have to get back to the prompts. But um, that's fun. Um, everything just sounds so generic, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, everything is, really. But <laughs> Nothing is new under the sun. But the things we're yeah. talking about, they just seem like, a, a, you know, like extra sun-dried, you know? Extra, extra sun-dried sun chips. Yeah. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Fried some sun-dried tomatoes on the pizza I made last mm. night. It was amazing. Dude, sun-dried tomatoes. We got this one that was like in like this kind of like garlic. It was like soaked in like this garlic sauce. Mm-hmm. And they were mm, they were so good. Anyway, that has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with it. Sun-dried tomatoes turn on our main protagonist. Ooh, sun-dried vegetables. tomatoes are a, te- are a uh, you know, normal technology. Wait, they're, they're a cook. And then all, like, the knives and cutting boards and stuff start attacking them. And it's this crazy action scene of them, like, fighting off floating knives and stuff. Turns out, twist, it was just Magneto discovering his powers. Ooh. And everything was just getting attracted to him because he's a I was going to say it's like Remy, but invisible. Remy? Yeah, from Ratatouille. <laughs> Right. Okay. What if? <laughs> what if we're let's do Ratatouille. Okay. But magical. Okay. So it's about this potion master. But he actually doesn't know how to make potions. It's the rat controlling him. That is really good at making potions. <laughs> okay. okay I don't think a rat makes sense. I'm Maybe like an I'm imp. Just I'm just kidding. That's, that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> okay. Like, how whimsical are we going to get? Because, like, what if... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm kind of down for a magical ratatouille. If okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the moral okay. of the story isn't some kind of, like, weird, contradictory, like, social inequality thing. Commentary on social inequality. Yeah, yeah, that was weird, huh? Um, okay, hear me out. It's, like... Magical world, okay? I don't know how, yet how to incorporate your dang prompt into this, but magical world. Uh-huh. Uh, even mine, even mine, we're, we're really just we're stretching. bending. We're stretching. Um, <laughs> here's a start. Magical world, okay? Yep. Uh, and everyone's super awesome, and everyone's a magician, okay? Mm-hmm. And then we got a kid, and he's the equivalent of, like, a janitor. He's okay. just, he's bad. He's mm-hmm. just, he's just... He's just not good at magic. He's a little he's a little squib. Or what is it called in Harry Potter? I think it's squib. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I thought mudblood, but I was like, I was not allowed to say that. Um, okay, but it's, imagine like a little squib, okay? Yeah. And, but then an imp comes along and they team up. And the imp is like, I have watched potion making my whole life, but I can't do it. Nobody would accept me. I'm an imp. I'm, I'm, I'm on the outskirts of, of society. But if I hide inside your pointy wizard hat and pull your hair and make you, then we'll both get what we want. I'll be able to make my awesome potions and you will rise to fame and be successful and get re- the recognition you need. Turns out the imp is m- evil and making him concoct the, the an evil potion that's going to destroy the world or something. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Do you kind of do you feel me? Okay. Okay. We can work with this. It's literally this. it's a, it's a wizard ratatouille. <laughs> it's wizard <laughs> ratatouille. But the twist is that the rat is the bad guy. Remy? I don't know. Is Remy his name? Yeah, I think Remy. And I've already like the dish. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I know that. But I, I I don't know if it was his name or the human the human's name. Um, okay, but like, do you, do you, is it, like, do you hear me? Yeah, I do hear and you. And then, but then, okay, but then, and then the message, right, is the kid then has to undo what he's done and turn against the imp, right, and save the world. hmm And the theme is, like, he had it in him all along. 
right? To save the world. He is a hero. He's awesome. But, like, it took this circumstance, you know what I mean, to, like, discover that. You know what I mean? It, it, he thought that it was all this uh, outward stuff about how good he is in mixing potions and dissecting <laughs> chimeras. Okay, okay, but okay. Actually, Sorry, a little aside here. So I was trying yeah. to find out the name of the guy. Yeah. And I totally forgot this is the dumb... Alfredo Linguini. <laughs> oh, yeah, his name's Alfredo Linguini. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so then that means this character also has to have, like, a magic-related pun. Um, you know, his name is uh, Benjamin Abjuration. Okay, so... <laughs> um, right? And that's the theme of the story, is... You know, he, he actually... All, he was, like, looking at all these people, and, like, they're all so cool. They're all heroes. They're all magicians and wizards. It's, like, recognizing your own self-worth? Yeah, killing monsters, and he's like, I'm such a loser, I'll never be able to do that. But then... This imp gives him his chance, and he becomes famous, and he's cooking up these awesome potions. But then he's like, then he finds out, oh no, what have I done? No, I no, just no, no, started. Okay, okay. I got it, I got it, I, I got it, I got it. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, he, potion making in this universe requires both, like, it's like half, like, cooking, and mm. half, like, magic, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is, likewise... In Ratatouille, he's like the son of some famous potion maker or what have you. Okay, oh, someone who's okay, really good okay, with magic, okay. but he yeah. himself is unable to do magic. Yeah, and he has just been like trying to hide it as long as he can, or like the general public doesn't know yet. Mm -hmm. And we get to have that like, self worth kind of thing, but he meets this imp who and like the two of them work together and like they can like come up with like recipes and ideas together using like his the the, the guys you know like brains like how to like things like in, how ingredients interact with each other and new ideas new recipes and the imp's magic and we can okay. still have like the imp like get him to make like things for selfish reasons or mm. you know things that are going to hurt others and mm. we can also introduce another character who is also who is also capable of, capable of magic and the main character like gets closer with them and the imp does something to regain control of him because if he finds another person who can do the magic to help make the potions then the imp is useless and the jig's up you know Okay. Okay, so our main character um, yeah. is the son of Baba Yaga. Okay. Okay. And she's like, she's the best. Mm -hmm. She's the queen. Okay. I mean, she is like top tier wit witch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Spells, potions, you name it. She's the bomb diggity. She's basically a celebrity in. The wizarding world, okay? Mm -hmm. Not that one, not trademarked. Not the trademark wizarding world. You know. And her son is a loser. I love the name Alfredo. I think he should still be named Alfredo <laughs> Yaga. <laughs> no, his, his name's... His name's... Pasta Bubba. Yaga. His name's Bubba. Bubba? Bubba, Bubba Yaga. Yaga. <laughs> 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 hey, Bubba. And Bubba, Boba, actually, no, I'm just kidding, B Boba Milk Tea, um, he's a loser, he can't cast spells for his life, Yeah. he has no friends, he j he's a disappointment, he's a disappointment, he's a loser, and he, you know, he's like kicking rocks, and he's like, ah, I'm, I'm a so loser, life's such a bummer, yeah, he's like, I'm a loser, Okay. Then he hears a little voice, and he's like, "Hey, help me!" And he goes over, and he sees this. Uh, this uh, here's a voice trapped underneath a thing. So then he like helps, helps it off, and he sees under there an imp, and he's like, "Oh no, an imp! Imps are evil and bad and demonic, and those are our enemies." This is literally the start of Ratatouille. Really? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember that movie at all. <laughs> and then the imp is like. Hey, uh, Bubba, how's it going? Um, 
And <laughs> the, and the imp's like, wait, don't be afraid. I know I look like an imp or whatever. I don't look like a demon, but look at me. I'm like, I'm a little imp. I'm small. I'm a little bony little, what can I do? And he's like, I understand you. And, Bu- and Bubba's like, yeah, you're just like me. And he's like, yeah, I got kicked out of demon society. I'm homeless. And they're like, we understand each other. We're both losers, kind of rejects. And the imp is like, hey, I, the imp is like, I want to get back at the demons for, you know, for mistreating me. And I have this magical power. And then Bubba's like, I'm a nerd. I know all about potions because I've studied hard so that I could become amazing. But too bad I don't, I don't have magic, so I can't even do any of the stuff I've studied. I've been waiting for my spark to ignite, but it's just never ignited. Mm-hmm. And if I defeat demons, I'll become popular like my mom, and I'll get the recognition I need. So they both have the same goal. And so they're like, that sounds great. So we're going to team up your magic, your, your, you know, my brains, your brawn, and we, we cook up these potions or whatever. We enter the potion championship. Loki, it's going to be a sports movie during like the act two. And, <laughs> and <laughs> it's the great wizarding bake off. And bro. Okay. Th- this is crazy. Cause I was looking, th- I was like scrolling through Netflix. Like, like okay, yeah. that would be funny. And when I said, uh, Queer Eye, I just scrolled past the Great British Bake Off, and I was like, oh, that would be kind of fun if you did a, a magical one, but I don't know how to work th- off of that right now. Like, to yeah, myself. Yeah, boom. They, there you go. Great Brit- See? Exactly. So, they have the same goal. Imp uh, wants to get back at the demons, and getting back at the demons, right, like, destroying demons will gain recognition for Bubba. So they work together, they become super famous or whatever, but the imp tricked him somehow into, you know, the imp is actually a spy for the demons. And he just needed access to Baba Yaga. Because, I mean, she's, she's the most powerful. Or, and finally, yeah. Or, the, the imp catches the protagonist at, you know, a down point. And yeah, yeah. S- sways the protagonist to... You know, to go along with this, like, out of spite or something. And over time, the protagonist, like, grows to realize that he doesn't agree with whatever he and the imp have been doing. Okay. And so it's just, like, add the conflict sooner. You know? As you, like, realize that he doesn't, like, like, agree with, like, everything that he and the imp are doing. Right, but then by then it's already too late. Yeah. By the time he's like, he's like, oh no. The imp's like, you've already the... gone this far. Yeah, and, and you know, and he's like, why would you stop now? Mm-hmm. You're about, this is the final of the Great Wizarding Bake Off. <laughs> why would, this is everything you've ever wanted. Your mom has won this title a million years in a row. Because she's immortal, because she's a witch. <laughs> And this is the junior Bake Off, and this you'll be you'll finally pl- you'll finally please her, right? Because she is so disappointed in you. You'll finally get the recognition. We're on the brink of greatness, you fool, or something, right? <laughs> but then, okay, but I'm saying like, the imp needs some kind of alternate motive that then the hero has to like turn against him and be like, right? Say the imp's like all along like. By the way, I love to meet your. I love to meet your mother. She's super famous. I, I, I get that, but stuff. I think that's like a little bit just like too typical. Like, what if we have it as like the understandable antagonist? Like he's he's uh, the killmonger, you know, of the story. Like he's out for vengeance, oh. but it's like it's totally right. understandable. Like why? And his reasoning is why. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. So then, what's like? Okay, so they're going after the demons, right? Yeah. So then, this is so far off our prompts, but I don't care anymore. We clearly can't do that. So <laughs> <laughs> what prompt? And so then, Bubba has to be like, yeah, but still, murder is wrong, even if it's a demons yeah. or something, right? I see what you mean. Okay. So it actually is the understandable antagonist. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, 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 okay. We have something, and even though it's not with the prompts, we're out of time. We're running out of time, so we just gotta we gotta seal this seal the deal. Okay. So down on his luck, no magic dude, Baba Yaga, son of the great Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Yeah. Meets this little imp, cast who's been cast out of demon society. Imp is well, okay, well, okay, wait, 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 wait. That, that's, that's not the opening scene, though. No, 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 What's... I'm just giving a brief overview of the plot. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. <clears throat> then, then I think we should, we can break down a little, little bit more yeah, yeah. deeper. Yeah, yeah, luck. They agree to work together. Uh, Bubba gets to actually do some of the things that he's wanted to do his entire life and get the recognition that he feels that he deserves. And he, in doing so, he's going to help his newly found friend get vengeance on the people who mistreated him over time yeah, they I mean, the great uh the british baking show uh whatever you know they meet the w- witch uh gordon ramsay you know yeah, uh stuff and yeah, n- make new yeah. friends allies rivals during the process open up up his eyes to what's what he's actually doing and the ramifications of what he and the imp have been doing this whole time. Yeah. He starts to go back and realize that he's not like really on board with everything. The imp uses like, "Oh, you've already gone this far." Blah 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 blah. Like, I've been trying to do this like yeah. for El- however long. Sure, but it, I think it's not just about like doing the right thing or whatever, because that it, it's like power versus the right thing, right? Because all this Bubba has wanted his whole life is to just. Mm-hmm have power like his mom right Mm -hmm. and then i think we have he has one friend who is stuck by his side another loser stuck by his side always and is like hey i know we're like we're losing we're gonna get through this together or whatever and then he meets bubba meets an imp right and then he becomes super successful and stuff right and it's kind of also that like thing of like the fame's kind of getting to him and like his friends like i don't like this Mm mm-hmm like, what's going on? And then also, you know what I mean? Then we can also kind of have that element in there as well. Okay. Because okay. that's kind of like a familiar, like, not trope, All I right. would say, but a All familiar. Right. Okay. Like, the in, in, like, inciting instance of, like, before the two of them meet. Yeah. Is his friend finally, like, showing that, like, he possesses magic. And he can, like, finally do magic. After, like, however long. Oh. They've both been, like, the only two people who haven't been able to do magic and whatever. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 and then and then he's like, "Well, I'm really just alone." Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh but I, but the friend's still there. You know what I mean? Yeah, the like, friend's still you know, there. It's not like the friend like walked yeah. away from him just because of this happened, right? And, and, and that's just the feels point, that right? Way. Yeah, that's the point, right? Because the friend's like, "Yeah, I got magic," but like we're still friends. I'm still with you. But then when Bubba gets popular, he's like, "I don't need like you're a loser." Mm-hmm. Like I don't need you anymore. And then he starts hanging out the popular kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so here's what I think happens. Okay. So, we have, uh, we open and we establish Baba Yaga. She's the queen, uh, right? She's not the queen of the, I mean, like, she's the bomb diggity. Mm -hmm. And her son is a loser. (laughs) And he gets bullied (laughs) at school because, and then his mom's like, you're such a disappointment and stuff, right? And then, but he has a friend who sticks with him in all his little wizarding classes and they both don't know how to do magic, and they're failing all their classes. They're brilliant. They're smart, but they just don't have magic, so they're failing. It's not their fault, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, wow, this society is kind of messed up. Um, <laughs> um, and then, like, something has to, like, yeah. So then the friend awakens. Their magic spark is ignited. And yeah. Bubba's like, bruh, <laughs> I'm the only one left, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he, and he, so he goes behind the school and he's kicking rocks. <laughs> and he's like, Dag Nabbit, wish I wasn't such a loser. Mm-hmm. I wish I had help. Yeah. I just need help. And then he's like, help me. And then he like goes and he helps it. Well, he's like, oh, help me. I'm a little limp. I'm Italian for some reason. I don't know why he's Italian. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, it's Ratatouille Italian. It is, right? Yeah. Okay, that's probably why. Um, and so then Remy, um, or, you know, Lucifer or whatever is like, Hey, Bubba, with your brains and my brawn, we can do the magic. And so he's like, I want, cause I want revenge on the demons. 
and you if you defeat demons um, ha uh, okay because like the problem is like are they going out to kill demons or like are they chilling at home is it like still like most of the story takes place in the city and he's just becoming popular and becoming like famous and stuff and cuz i was saying that's kind of the inciting incident and then like the triggering thing is like the school gets attacked by a demon and then with lucifer's help he defeats the demon and everyone's like whoa he's awesome mm -hmm. you know what i mean something like that but like that like yeah like what's because their goals are in line so like is the story then like do they go out and hunt monsters or something or like are they like yeah because basically defeating demons would get both of us what we want revenge for me and you would get popular and then he just goes and does a bake-off like what <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah or is that it? That's what he does. So then they team up and he runs away into the monster half of the world and he brings back the corpse of a monster and he becomes famous. Hmm. I don't think it's quite and there yet. Uh, what if... And Lucifer's like, that's... Yes, just keep going. Get to the more of them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's... Hey, give me a second here. I almost got it. I almost got it. Yeah. Perfect. I got it. Okay. Okay. Um, Impy Boy. Yeah. Is like the son of like a a demon prince. Okay. Okay. And he's trying to find he's, a way to kill his dad. He's he's Satan's son. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's trying to find a way to kill his dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And, and what? That, that gives us a more like constrained, like okay, like what is what are they even trying to do? You know, what is their goal? You know, are they like, trying to kill all demons, or are they trying to? arm them or they're trying to kill a specific one i think it's better for it we're trying to like kill a specific one trying to yeah, find and then and a yeah potion and, and, and like a poison that works against a specifically powerful being you know yeah and if bubba is like I, if i can if i kill satan <laughs> i'm top dog <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. i'll be popular if i kill satan okay okay, <laughs> okay and i also like if you know like bubba's got his friend and they're both like kind of like nerdy or whatever Bubba's yeah. like his he like loves potions and his friend is like a magical history kind of dude you know he's a history buff. I, I think I think it should be a girl some kind of yeah like like some kind of history buff and the history buff friend like I don't know like recognizes something about like what Bubba and like the imp are doing like recognizes some sort of sign from something that happened in history or whatever I just want the friend to call out Bubba you know like Eventually. you can't kill Satan because then he'll evolve into his final form you fool because in history this would happen we've actually we trapped Satan into this mortal body so by killing him you would unleash his soul you can't do this but he's like but but the fame I would get from killing him, or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that kind of what you mean? Or not I know, that exactly, I was, but like more like saying is like I don't know, like maybe not like a history buff, but some sort of like nerdy thing and recognizes something about like the way that like the ma magic and the potions like work together, and you like recognizes something about the magic, like oh, like that's demonic magic or, or whatever. You know? You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, okay. I don't. Okay, okay. Here's what it is. Here's what it is. The spell. The thing that he's going to use to kill Satan mm -hmm. is like has its roots in like some demonic thing, and it requires a sacrifice, and it's going to be him. Mm. So the imp is going to use him as like you know what I mean to cast a spell, and like it, it's going to have to sacrifice him, uh. right? I don't, or is that I don't, just making okay, the imp I don't think too it evil? should be him. Because I, I really like the imp as a, like... 
Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. Like, you understand the imp, and like, oh, and this whole time he's been trying to get this person he's allying with as a sacrifice kind of, like, undermines that. I see what you mean. It's Baba Yaga. <laughs> that would be more understandable, yeah. The sacrifice, and, and he's like, yeah, what? My mom is never, all she's done. She's never seen to support me. She's always just made fun of me and called me a disappointment and all this kind of stuff. And then at the end, he's like, whoa, I was about to sacrifice my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've been so consumed yeah. by this. Like, I was about to, like, what? she's my mom. <laughs> Are you crazy? I love her. And stuff, you know what I mean? And, like, that's kind of the, okay, okay, I like this. So, so the friend is the one who is like, wait a minute. I've seen this before. I've seen that glyph in that spell you just came up with. I've seen that before. And then she she delves into the to the restricted section. Yeah. Um, which is just roped off. And she ducks under the <laughs> rope. And she goes to the restricted section. And she's like, that's right. It's this demonic spell that requires a sacrifice. And or so well, but but the kid already knows that. Right? Cause he's like, I'm bringing my mom to sacrifice her, right? That's the point. So then is the friend the main character? <laughs> is the hero? <laughs> Um, because it, it, like, does the kid know about the sacrifice part and, like, is sacrificing his, <laughs> his mom? This is so weird. <laughs> this is so wacky. How far we have come. This is so wack. We have to just go on this. We're, like, we're about to re hit an hour. We, j <laughs> we have to go along this. We have to, we definitely can't start back at square one, but, like, does he know that, that he has to sacrifice his mom? Or, like, is that a thing that... He doesn't know. But then once again, then the imp was tricking him into it. Is it, it, okay, are you okay with, like, the imp tricking him into bringing his mom to be sacrificed? I don't know. I feel like I need to get the, get to know this imp more to be able to say that. <laughs> and you have, like, a sit-down lunch, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, they, they were so close. This is, like, this is there. Okay, let's like start start from the beginning and then see if we can come up with something by the time we get to the end, okay? Okay. So, boom, he's a failure. His her, his friend, she manifests her magical powers. And he's like, bruh, I'm so lonely now. I'm the only one. I'm such a loser. Runs into, uh, you know, Balzabub or whatever. Balzabub. <laughs> Runs into... Balzabub an and Bubba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the movie is called. Um... <laughs> and you're like, what? No, the movie's called Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Okay, and they team up. Uh, him and Impy Poo. And they team up. And he and and they're like, okay, we gotta practice. Right? Mm -hmm. We got we gotta practice our powers so we can uh, get ready to fight Satan. And so they do something, you know, they fight a monster or they do some crazy spell or they concoct some crazy potion that gets them popular in school and then they do something else right like what's the bulk of the movie for them to like then they become famous and then they're like i'm gonna sacrifice my mom <laughs> like <laughs> what like what's I guess the... the jump between Excuse getting me. famous to sacrificing your mom's a little bit big I don't, I don't know if that works. <laughs> Sacrificing your mom. Like, nobody's done this before, right? Like, like, there's no way anyone has, like, has had a story where someone hasn't had to, like, sacrifice their mom. That's just so weird. No okay, one's ever sacrificed so, family members. Nope. No, no, never. <laughs> um, okay. So, what are we missing? What's the bulk of the movie? Or not the movie, per se, or the story. I feel like this is a kid's movie, right? This is essentially... The Ratatouille and the Half-Blood Prince. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Re yeah, that's actually what it should be called. Right? It is, it is, like, it's, it's, kind, it's a, it's a kid's movie, right? I mean... I think so. That's the vibe I'm, that's the vibe I'm getting. Okay, okay, as long as we're both on the same page there. 
so, you know, there has to be some wacky hijinks or whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. what's the bulk of the Ratatouille movie? I don't know. I remember that movie being kind of boring. I know a lot of people like Sim for that film, but I, I haven't seen it in a long time. Ah, uh, they like make food, and he'd be like, starts like to be like get like accepted, and there's this whole thing with like the owner of the restaurant not wanting to give the restaurant to him because the guy doesn't know that he's the heir. Yeah, and then the he has like, romance. Yeah, and there's the romance. And then Remy like has a fat brother or something. I don't. Remember. Yeah, and he like gets caught. Like stealing food from the restaurant, and that gets into like the weird thing. Like, I, I don't know. There, there's stuff in there. Okay, what we need is like something, something big happens. They succeed in a massive way, mm-hmm. and then we get to like the high point, whether it's a montage or whatever, of Bubba getting what he wanted, of being successful, of you know, of getting recognition. Right? We have to have that kind of hype, yeah. right? Like in Ratatouille, of him getting accepted. Of him making some bomb ass meals, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, we get we get to that point, but I feel like that's all even still just like second act stuff, right? I mean, like, what's the midpoint? Like, like I feel like that's still only the first half of the movie. Is that something needs to happen in the middle of the movie? I feel like because we can't just have just sit with him just being successful for like an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So then, then did is that when they start the quest for Satan? <laughs> <laughs> like, then does it transform into like a quest movie, like an adventure? You know what I mean? Like, then they go on an adventure. Maybe or like what? that's that's when the imp is like, "This is fun and all, but I yeah, still want hey. to kill my dad." Yeah. We- <laughs> yo, yo, hey, this. It's all fun and games, but I still want to murder my dad, okay? So can we get back to that? No, yeah, right, right. And he's like, you got to keep your end of the bargain. And then he's like, okay, right? Mm-hmm. So then, so then I guess we turn into an adventure film. Um, and then his mom's like, what do you... You know, he, he's going to sneak out to go into the, to the nine hells or whatever, right? <laughs> he's going to go to the monster place. Right, the demon place mm-hmm. and find Satan so he can kill him. And he's trying to sneak out whatever and his mom runs into him and then they can have a moment where she's like You know, maybe Baba Yaga is like, you don't have to do this. <laughs> no. Make it even you know more I mean? ridiculous. Yeah. He find like they get like to the place like where like the demon guy is gonna be and he finds yeah. his mom there. His mom and the demon guy are having like a hidden like relationship and he and the <laughs> imp are like half brothers or brothers Boom. what are you what is happening <laughs> what is happening <laughs> <laughs> and like the like the They're demon guy brothers. he's like he's super sexy it's just a, he's a sexy demon guy you're like whoa Whoa, Satan's hot. <laughs> and him and the and Baba Yaga have a thing. Yeah, and you're like the demon guy, like he's like super yeah. evil. He's just kind of like I don't know. What? This is. Oh, wait. First of all, yes, yes, one hundred percent. Okay, that's just so funny. <laughs> we plant early on that like Baba Yaga like disappears. Mm-hmm. Like, random, she'll, she'll just, like, be gone for a couple days. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, but at the beginning, we played as, like, she's probably going on some crazy quest, and I'm, she forgets about me, right? She doesn't care about me. <laughs> but it's actually because she's hanging out with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so, he, he, he's, he's running away in, in the dead of mm-hmm. night, and he runs into his friend. And she's like, what are you doing? You don't have to, you don't have to go kill Satan. Like, you're... Like, what happened to you? Like, what's going on or whatever? Yeah. But then he, but then he's like, no, like, I gotta do it. Like, I'm not enough. I need more power, fame. And then, but then she she wants to help him, right? So then she follows, so she, she can kind of hop on right on the adventure as well. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess also there has to be a point during the adventure where like she learns about the imp. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something happens there. And she's like, something about this feels off. You guys look so similar. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> okay, so ba- then basically we kind of move into like an actual adventure kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the Nine Hells, and there's, you know, crazy hijinks and stuff, and they're, you know, fighting these, uh, <laughs> the monsters or whatever. Okay, and they get to the palace, and they sneak inside, because the imp, you know, he knows all the secret, secret ways in. Mm-hmm. And they see the back of Satan, and they're like, and he's like, hey, father, I'm back for my revenge. And then he turns, and who is that he was just hugging? Baba Yaga. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because <laughs> they have a secret romance. <laughs> and they're half brothers. What the heck is happening? What? Why? Okay, okay. What? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What's the twi- What's the ending of this movie? <laughs> What is going okay, okay. on? And so the reason that like magic has never like worked for him is because he's like half demon, okay? Okay. And like I don't know, like the magic works differently. And he's like learning mm-hmm. how to do all these things from the imp and it's like starting to like make sense. Oh, so we were planting all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but like what? Okay, that's that's cool and all. Mm-hmm. But what? How, what is the ending of this movie? Like, is there a bad guy? Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, how do you end this movie? I feel like we have to end with all of them being a happy family, right? Yeah. Like that, That's where this is leading. Like, what but, like, if like what? one of the things that like <laughs> they have to like defeat something? Like something? Ha- Wait, we can't just end it like oh, actually, I'm like oh, okay, cool, <laughs> happy family. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. There has to be some big thing that they have to, like, team up and, like, uh... Okay, okay, okay. Here, okay, okay. One of the reasons, like, why the imp hates his father so much is that, like, he felt like he's, like, never lived up to the other, like, sons and daughters of, you know, big demon dude. Okay. And, you know, like, they get to the end... Uh, Bubba is like this, oh, like, whoa, that's my mom. Are you my dad? What? <laughs> and he's like, hey, Im- Im- Impy, we're related. And he sees, like, Impy's about to kill his dad. And then he's got to talk down his half-brother turned ally, <laughs> turned partial antagonist, turned, you know, co-conspirator, whatever. <laughs> As it goes, it's like a difficult relationship throughout the movie where like they agree with things and they're like all disagreeing, but he goes along with it anyway to save, I don't know, how things are, and they come to an understanding, and they all accept each other, and they're one big happy family, like Hamburger Helper. <laughs> okay, okay. Like Hamburger Helper. Um, f- there needs to be something, though. That I think they need to like team up and stop. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like him talking about his brother is good, but then he, they need to all team up and do something. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Maybe. We ha- I haven't really come up with a name for Impy Dude yet. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Luke, right? Like Lucifer. <laughs> like Luke. He's like he- he's Lucifer Junior. And so his nickname is, they call him Luke. <laughs> yes. So with L-U-C. Yeah, L-U-C, yeah. Okay. Luke, Lukey Pookie, yeah. So Luke this whole time has been directed by his mother. His mother's the one edging him on throughout this whole entire thing. Oh, okay. Right, 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 right. The Night yeah. Watcher or whatever. Okay, okay. And that's the, like, the big baddie. That's the big baddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 Um. Okay. And, and we had a mix some fun things and some, like, surprisingly real-life things about, like, a divorce and... <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know, like, like the families that okay, are, you know, like, that's like... A, that's the thing, like, he feels his dad abandoned him and his mother, you know? Mm-hmm. That's one of the things. Who feels this? Sorry, is this Bubba or uh, Luke? Uh, Luke. 
you know? Right, right, right. Because he abandoned them for Baba Yaga. Yeah. At least oh that's what it gosh. feels like, but it's also because his mother was like, I don't know. Jacked up. <laughs> jacked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. This, is, this is the best seller right here, boys. Wait, this is actually like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I feel like this would be an Illumination movie because they make the wild, like, like Boss Baby and Minions. I have mm -hmm. younger siblings, so I've seen those movies. Those movies are like wild. Yeah. Like, the writers were clearly on something, because it is, like, super weird. And don't you love um, how the minions were, like, involved with everything, but specifically not there for a period of time that happened to include Nazis? <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, dude, they're, like, they're wild. Like, there's just one part of minions were like they're they're in london or something they're trying to steal like i think the queen's crown and then, then they're like they get caught by these three guards and then the minion uses a, a one of his uh spy equipment which is like a um, hypnotism hat and he hypnotizes the three guards and then they strip and their hair falls from their hat and covers their body like they have this super long hair and they start like dancing to like disco music it's like the weirdest experience huh? i was in the theater i was in the theater with my siblings i brought my younger siblings to watch this movie and i was like what am i watching like this is the weirdest thing this feels like that like this is like this movie is gonna be like just super wacky and like <laughs> really re weird I, i'm and just random. picturing the, you know, like the minions like illumination like thing is like they like <laughs> scream out like the name of the studio and then we go into this movie yeah, like, I, I, yeah, I see it. I see it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, like, this kind of feels like Ratatouille, but it's also just way worse. <laughs> You're like, this is just worse Ratatouille. <laughs> Which, that's just super wacky. Okay, so what is the um, evil mom trying to do? Like, final thing we just have to figure out. Like, what's your goal here? She was trying to get Satan killed, right? Yeah. With the sun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because, I don't know, maybe, like, the divorce settlement didn't include hell. You know? <laughs> Even did gotta keep hell. And she really wanted the house. <laughs> this is so good! <laughs> That's exactly what it is! That's exactly what it is! She wanted to keep this, the stuff that he had to keep for the divorce. Mm-hmm. This is so weird, because it's like it's like weirdly like and like the, like the one norm. thing like one of the things like in the end that like uh like brings Luke like over to the side of like the other guys and she's like mm -hmm. you got to keep all of this and all I got was a lousy excuse for a son or whatever you know oh ooh yeah that's and good and Luke after like just realizing like. His father did actually want him. He just, like, wasn't allowed to see him because of his mother or whatever, you know? Because cause, cause she manipulated the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. She manipulated the, the law. <laughs> she got this full custody. So, this is so weird. <laughs> but, like, it's, all it's like, super preposterous in, like, a weird magical world. But, like, also, like, this is, like, a real thing in, like, real mm -hmm. life that, like, kids, kids can relate to. Um, and, <laughs> um, okay, so she wanted to kill. <laughs> she did to take custody of hell. This is so weird. Um, this and is then, so funny. <laughs> this is great. Um, and so then they have to defeat her, right? Because then she's like, okay, you know what? You all teamed up, like, you didn't actually end up killing Satan. Good thing that there is this loophole if I do this thing, right? And then they have to go stop her, right? And then they defeat her. Um, in this big battle before them. And Baba Yaga has to apologize to Bubba. You know, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know, and, 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 you know, Lucifer, like, the parents have to have their own arcs, you know? Yeah. We should have tried harder, and we, we, we do actually care about you and stuff, and yep. and then they become one happy family, and then also, they merge the worlds. They're, uh, they're like, we, wizards and demons don't have to fight each other. Because the reason they had a, the relationship wasn't secret, right, was because, like, a wizard and a demon, you know what I mean? And so they're like, and then, you know, the... The two boys okay. are like. And if we want to get even our... more, if we want to get even more deep, the way yeah. that Demon Dude and Baba Yaga met in the first place was to like 
defeat the the mom originally. You know, okay. like the mom was gonna try and do something like in the past, mm-hmm. and like that's part of the reason for their divorce. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I just love like these like demonic like. I just imagine like a demonic like divorce is like a contract <laughs> going. You know what I mean? It's like, so, yeah. so wacky. Okay, <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, and then, like, the parents have arcs, you know what I mean? But then the two boys are, like, you know what I mean? Like, they can they can make their parents, re- like, see that, like, look how different we are, you know what I mean? But, like, we became friends, and we were brothers this whole time. We didn't even realize it, but we were still able to connect. And, like, see, there are two worlds are different. You shouldn't be ashamed. No, that's what it is. That's what it is. They tell the parents, like, you shouldn't be ashamed of this. If this is love, you need to be, you need to, you need to be open about it to the world. And, and bring peace between our two societies Mm -hmm. because you know we're 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 losers you know we thought we were losers or whatever but like what what was i trying to say here what was the theme we're Um, wieners we're wieners um no but it's like don't hide who you are you know what i mean because that's their also thing that's also kind of their thing right of like learning who they are they don't not not to be not to be somebody that someone else expects of them you know what i mean Mm mm-hmm that's what they had to learn, or at least Bubba or something. Okay. All I right. Think we're done here. This is this is, wow. I, I wanna. We have been on a journey. This is a this was a whole journey. Wow. I did not expect it to go this way. <laughs> I was like, maybe we'll come up with some dope idea for like a sci-fi show or like something. <laughs> we come up with like the wackiest kids movie <laughs> ever. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That has heart. Yeah. He had his heart in the middle of it, really, and you know what I mean. Not a lot of mo- kids movies these days tackle, you know, real life things like this. You know uh, that that a lot of kids actually experience and stuff, and so like you know what I mean. Um, but wizards and demons. <laughs> okay, this was a wild ride. Uh, you know, not wow. bad for our first shot. We did not end up keeping the prompts like whatsoever. <laughs> oh yeah, that went out the window. Immediately, <laughs> like like whatsoever. I'm like, we're good enough to try to combine two prompts. Didn't even end up following one. The only connection is like potions, <laughs> because of wizardry. <laughs> and they do compete in the Great Wizarding Bake Off. Yeah, I hope, yeah in the yeah. beginning, to become popular. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh wow. wow. Hey, you know what? we'll only get better at this. <laughs> We will. This was interesting. That's for sure. No, this was so much fun, dude. This I want to see this movie now. <laughs> I want, I want this movie. So if you guys want to see this movie, <laughs> subscribe Jump to our, our Patreon, where we'll be animating yeah. this by hand over the next twelve years. <laughs> Kickstarter. We're gonna start a Kickstarter <laughs> for this animated kids movie. Uh, oh yeah. For, wait. What, what are we gonna name this thing? Ah, uh, um. Bubba and Lucifer. <laughs> it's like a little buddy cop movie. <laughs> I'd know Impetui. Oh. <laughs> Impetuous. I don't know. I don't be, know. We have a name. It be an imp pun. It's just going to be an imp pun. It's just an imp pun. Impossible. <laughs> imp impossible. <laughs> Mission impossible. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god, that's perfect. Mission imp possible. <laughs> It's like a bad, like, Disney Channel movie. Like, you know how those, like, they always have, like, the worst names that are, like, puns? Like, all oh. the, like, the, like, the names of their movies are, like, super bad, like, puns. Mission Imp Possible? This might oh be the gra- single greatest piece of media. <laughs> of media. Of media ever, ever constructed. <laughs> This episode, this podcast episode right here may be the best episode we've ever done. If I die tomorrow, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with it because of this 
because I got this out into the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Mission Impossible. I love and hate this so much. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode or hated it with a passion, let us know <laughs> on Instagram at D20 Academy or on our Discord, and you can get into our Discord by messaging us on Instagram or by commenting on a YouTube video on on our YouTube channel, uh, D20 Academy. Listen to our actual play series, Star Wars Friends Like These. Look out for other podcast episodes. I think we'll be doing something like this again soon. Um, with other prompts and stuff and just, just seeing how, how we can go, but, um, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. You're still around. <laughs> We're so sorry <laughs> that we put this, this movie into your heads. I, I'm so sorry. All right. Bye.